when the high priest in Acts chapter 23 verse 1 began to deal unjustly with Paul, and Paul said, you are judging me. God would punish you. Paul's prayer was correct. But people informed him. Paul looked straight at the sunny train and said, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience. What sin did he commit? At this, the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. That is not right. Look. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you. He said, God will strike you. You charge me according to the law, yet you yourself violate the law by commanding that I be struck. Those who were standing near Paul said, How dare you insult God's high priest? You see, the high priest of God. Paul replied, Brothers, I did not realize that he was the high priest. He immediately withdrew his word. If the man was my colleague, for instance, a mere judge, God strike you. But to this, the high priest, you can't say, May God strike you. To the president, to the minister, you can't say, May God strike you. To your boss, you can't say, May God strike you. You keep quiet and go to the Father. You have the privilege, you have access to Him. But when you come, don't come with the attitude whereby you accuse Him of wrong choices. And exactly that's what we are doing. You know, when you attack the sovereignty of God, you are saying to God, you chose some people like we don't even know why. That is why I can't admit that this is your choice. This is from Satan. He will ask, where is the source of Satan's power? You will say, you gave him when he was Lucifer. Do you think, do you think I couldn't have been able to withdraw that power? At the end of the day, you will say that God is not just. Yet God is not unjust. Let every man be liar and God true. That's what we call sovereignty. When you enter the Gospels at the point you think that God is not just in some areas, yet He's just. Apostle Paul starts a demonstration and there was a point he was facing an impasse. At the end of the story, you realize that what God did is not good. And he said, brother, God does what he wants. Who are you? Keep quiet and move forward. There are areas where God says, you are my creatures. So stay calm. You don't understand anything. The little intelligence you have comes from me. Even the analysis of good and wrong comes from me. So stay calm. Say to your neighbor, stay calm. He's on his throne. So these are the prayers and the spirit of exaltation prayer. It comes with the feeling of God is sovereign. The profound respect mentality that God is almighty and that he is God and he doesn't have to explain anything. He does what he wants. When I realize that my prayers change, all prayers of exaltation are based on the understanding of this principle. When you have a problem with exaltation, this is the attitude you must have before God. Not God as your friend, not God as your mate. When I want to activate the exaltation mood, I come to the Father who is above everything. The king and creator, that mentality instills in you the fear of God, respect, reverence. Amen. Hallelujah. In royalty, you don't come empty-handed, but when you offer something, you are the one to say thank you. And the king does not say thank you. That doesn't make sense. The one who receives is one to say thank you. But before kings, when you give to the king, you give him your money. Thank you. 10 million, thank you. Thank you. Clothes, thank you. And that's what we are doing with God. We come to him with gifts and we say thank you. After the offerings, you don't sit down and say, God, what are you saying? Thank me for having offered a big envelope. No, God is a king. God is a king. You give to him and you say thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. You go to preach to Korogo, to Yamusukro. God sent us as the one who commissioned us when we come back. He has to congratulate us. My sons, I'm proud of you. You obey my word. But we have to thank him. Because we went to Korogo and came back. Yet we are on duty for him. Go and preach the gospel. When we come back, he should say, I welcome you. My sons, I'm proud that you obeyed my word. No. 
What was the prayer I just made before starting? Brothers, let's thank God for having sent us to Yamsukro. Let's thank him for having saved souls. He himself saved souls. He healed the sick. He healed the sick. So we are going to thank him. Because he is sovereign. So you understand that the spirit, the prayer of exaltation takes into account the sovereignty of God. We say thank you for everything. You even say thank you for your breath. You know, you realize that out of sovereignty, he granted you to wake up today. So you say thank you. Are we together? Are we together? Hallelujah. The first characteristic of exaltation prayer, it is a prayer that recognizes God is sovereign, that he is the master of all, everything you do. It is that mentality that brings about the fear of God. You begin to realize that he is not your mate. And you cannot intimidate him. Whether you are 20,000 to pray, he will not be moved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are not happy, what would you do? You say, oh, this is not right. It is not right. What would you do? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, he will even show you that it was right. He is God. Amen. 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 Smart people cannot put this into their program. No. That is why they don't go to the top. A slave, and you know, this is why slaves are on horses and princes are on the ground. A slave has the notion that his boss is sovereign. In the world of slavery, slaves are on horses and princes are on the ground. What he's trying to say is that when we are slaves, it means that the type of relationship we have with God wraps on God. It means that we come to God as slaves. You know, a slave, and Jesus speaks about it in a passage. He said, a slave, at the time of dinner, he serves his boss and says, thank you. Can you please find a passage for me? Are we together? There are people who don't like this message. Because democracy has taught us to discuss with everybody. The president talks, we talk. The superior speaks, we speak. And we talk about freedom of speech. Freedom, freedom. Yes, there is a freedom. There is a freedom. But God is sovereign. And the other day I told you that the particularity of God that makes him different from tyrants, the king sacrifices himself for his sheep. God loves us. He loves you. Out of sovereignty, he chose you. He loved you. But there are areas that you cannot understand. He doesn't need to explain it to you. And you must also know that out of sovereignty, he chose you, you and loves you. But when you come, you must respect what he has already established. Whether you understand it or not, when you humble yourself, then will you understand. So Jesus said this. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, John 8, 28, can we have it? Then you will know that I am. He, he made John 8, 28, hallelujah. Let's read together. Then Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. Amen. Jesus didn't say you will know who I am, but that I am He. You will understand my word, my greatness, that I am He. He did not say when you have lifted the Son of Man, you will know who I am. He said that I am He. Exaltation helps you understand the power of God. The greatness of God. Unless you pray a prayer of exaltation, you will not understand the greatness of God. And that's what you need to request for. In order to be able to deal with injustice, fully set in high place, it must go. But it cannot live because you are fighting it. You must not fight it. You must deal with the person who establishes. However, in order to get there, you must be able to prostrate to exalt the ruler because if you don't do that hallelujah god is good when we exalt him one day when i was praying for some situations he told me exalt me admit my sovereignty 
Jesus did not say, when you know that I am he, you will exalt me. After exalting me, you will know who I am. You don't need to know who he is. You must first prostrate on the ground that you get the revelation of hidden things. You don't need to have the revelation and say, Oh, I now understand why you appointed him. God has criteria you don't know. A mother is lifted above her child. When she sees that her child is sleeping too much, looking at the future, he might miss some opportunities because of the sleep. You flog him, which he will see as injustice because that behavior can hinder him. He hasn't seen anything in life. He's only seven years or 10 years old, but you are older than him because you've been on earth for the past 45 years. You have seen things he hasn't seen. You have a position. You correct his behavior. He sees injustice. You don't know why God appoints people. There are things he has seen. If that bad person he put there, he will arrange some things. To the extent that when you compare, you say, oh yeah, long live the managing director. So, first element of prayers of exaltation is to admit to come with the mentality of God's sovereignty. The second element is prostration. Say with me, prostration. Prostration. So prostration is what most pagans use to get promoted. God made sure that, in fact, God appoints angels and spiritual beings on every domain of his sovereign decisions. Unfortunately, or in his sovereign plans, a group of, of angels rebelled against God. So they rather began to serve Satan. In that group, we have, for instance, dominions, which God created to manage the earth. And countries, we also have authorities. We have spirits we call authorities. The spirits we call authorities are those that give power to human beings. God gives power, but that power, he has given it to some spirits we call authorities, which give power. So these authorities were established by God and in their turn give power to human beings. Okay, are we together? Are we together? Those spirits have power. There is another category which we call heights. Heights. All these things are meant to exalt men who are not necessarily deserve it. Or those who don't have a good behavior. God reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Satan, in a very illegal way, we don't know how he managed, managed to get power over the earth. Sorry, not power over the earth, but power over kingdoms. And Satan gave an important key. Satan, Satan, he received power over the kingdoms. Apparently, men gave that power to him. God had given us the earth. Sorry, not the earth. God gave us the nations. But we gave kingdoms and countries to Satan. So in the book of Matthew chapter 4, there is an important revelation when Satan tempted Jesus. He said this to him. He said, if you bow down before me. But before that, he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. Not the earth, all the kingdoms of the earth, all the countries. All the kingdoms. He showed him the US, Dubai. He showed him South Africa. He showed him Ivory Coast. He showed him all the countries. And Satan said, verse 9, the devil led him to a very high mountain. He showed him all the kingdoms and their glory. Can you see the Champs-Élysées in Paris over there? All these beautiful things are mine. I will give you all these things if you bow and worship me. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. And Satan revealed something important. He said, before I give you power over all the nations, you will command a head of state, move, it will move. You will command a king to move, it will move. You will ask a king, if you want that power, Jesus, I can give it to you. But before I give it to you, you must do something. You must bow before me. Prostration is the key to the transfer from a higher authority to an inferior authority. 
it means that before someone who is exalted exalts someone that person might bow down before satan gives power to someone that person must bow down before <laughs> a minister exalts someone that person must bow down the word prostration means two things in the word of god both in the new and the old testament there is a word we call proskuneo proskuneo is to kneel down bowed head and even lay down on the ground but the word the devil used here pipto say with me pipto pipto that does not necessarily refer to your posture but that refers to another way of prostrating in fact before you are exalted you must peep to the one who is exalted if you don't peep to say with me peep to peep to so when you see a boss who exalts other bosses it means that those people have surely peep to peep to peep, peep to that guy hallelujah before god exalts a christian he must all, not only do proskuneo but also pipto say pipto are we together so people don't go higher because when they pray they only do proskuneo oh god who is like you who can be compared unto you that's proskuneo that one is proskuneo i worship you i worship you I worship you. That's proskuneo. My God, you are lifted, Father. That's proskuneo. The other word is pipto. Pipto is what the alabaster bottle woman did. She pipto Jesus. And after doing that, this is what Jesus did. First, people attacked her, and Jesus said, "This woman, I will lift her up." So long as people will talk about me, they will talk about her. Out of his sovereignty. He mentioned her name in biblical paragraphs. In a few minutes, he paid tribute to that woman, a woman that used to be called sinner. Today, she is mentioned in the holy scriptures. Jesus met a lot of people on the earth, but not all of them were lifted to have their name in the Bible. Today, we make mention of that woman in the Bible. Why? Because in a split of seconds, she peeped at Jesus Christ. Sometimes Christians are too big to peep to. intelligent people cannot peep to peep to satan said if you can only peep to me i will lift you up without peep to it's not possible you must peep to say peep to but only peep to god and jesus answered to satan and said no 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 i don't want your power i don't have anything to do with you i will only peep to god the lord god and only him amen, amen. who wants to peep to what is peep to ask me brother it is the greek word peep to in the old testament hebrews called that word nafal which means to fall according to the first meaning it means to be laid down and what i like about the word nafal is to be thrown on the ground it means prostration proskuneo the other word is to kneel down but nafal nafal uh, i could have asked you nafal but the sentence god used before jesus was greek the original passage is in greek its equivalent in hebrew is nafal nafal means to be thrown to the ground you are thrown so pipto also means step down from a high place to step down in fact pipto is what jesus did the bible says he was equal to god but he stepped down you know no one is higher than god when we say we we'll lift god up in good english it means that if god was at this level put him higher put him higher suppose this bible is god means lifting him higher but you cannot lift god up because no one is higher than god no one is higher than god he is the highest 
So you cannot lift him up. The only thing you can do is to step down. It means since God is here, hallelujah, the one who peeped toes in his mind is not putting God higher because he saw that God is higher and there is no one higher than him. Therefore, the only thing that is left to adjust the distance, he has to come down. So even when it gets to the ground, he has to dig and he will go underground. That is what Jesus did with the Father. The Bible says he was the equal to God. But he came down. He came down even on the earth. He said, this is not enough. He obeyed unto death. He even went into hell. And in verse 9, the Bible says, that is why. Hallelujah, God sovereignly lifted him above and gave him the name above all other names so that in the name of Jesus every knee bows in heaven on the earth and under the earth hallelujah hallelujah amen Jesus didn't only proskuneo God, he also peeped told, he didn't only kneel down, he stepped down. And coming down means losing one's glory. Stepping down means, in fact, pipto is like, you know, you already have a level, you have a dignity. There is a type of respect people have for you. When you get in front of God, you get rid of that. But what you do is you devalue yourself. You devalue yourself before God. You step down. People means accepting humiliation. When you get to the throne, there are 24 old men. They had crowns. They are kings. They knelt down before God. What they, what they did was proskineo by removing their crown. They said, before you, we throw our crown. Your crown is your dignity. You know, for instance, a woman preparing for a, her wedding in a beautiful gown. And she thinks about God and said, before God, I am nothing. On the day of her wedding, she dirties a wedding gown. She not only knelt down, she humbled herself. There is a difference between kneeling down and humbling oneself. Jesus did not kneel down. He humbled himself. He took humiliation, shame. He took shame so that God, so that the plans of God could be fulfilled. Amen. Listen, this, that's the same thing people do with the spirits we call. When somebody wants power, he goes and worship demons. Foul spirits we call authorities. That's what they do. And those spirits always ask them to peep toward them. Yeah, that is why they are told to go and stand at crossroads. That's humiliation. You, a minister, an MD, you are asked to go and stand at the road cross, wear a red pant, and do this. Yo, 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 yo. And take fetishes. You see that before that demon, he didn't only offer something. After people's conversion, they tell you about their humiliation. It means they humble themselves. Pipto is to step down. It's not kneeling down, it's stepping down. It means stepping down. You understand that you cannot lift God up because he's already high. You have to create a distance by coming down from your position. And only then will God ask, who was in front of you? It is head of service. And he will say, okay, he will appoint you out of sovereignty as the head. Then princes are on horses. <laughs> because the prince has become a slave. So if the prince wants to be on the horse, he has to be the slave of the one who appoints people because on the horse only slaves can be on the horse not princes when you want God to exalt you you must throw your crown on the ground you must step down before God and it means a lot of things your ability to obey obeying to the extent of being put to shame walking kilometers just because God asks you to preach Paul said, I don't preach because I like it. I preach because he said it. 
That's what we call peep to. How can a mature person like me, MD, go to a crossroad? You would do it not because it's convenient, but God said, who will save my people? You say, I. So you move. When you peep to God and he sends you, you don't say, I don't have money. As soon as he says it, move. And that is how people become ministers. When the president asks something, it, they don't ask money. Do you think the president gives them money to have billboards? The one who invests the most, spends a lot on the campaign, will be appointed. It means he, he loses whatever he had. He loses it. Before the president appoints some people, they do a lot. You, you might think, ah, this is shame. Do you have a dignity at all? He has lost his dignity. Peep to you lose your dignity. And the sovereign God, you are small. But before men, you are great. They will say, but Jesus was naked on the cross because of the Father's will. Little men. Jesus was killed by those people. They unclothed Jesus because of the Father's will. Who will go and die for them? Who will go and die for men? Jesus said, I... He knew everything we would lose. First, he became a human being, great loss. And he allowed men to, to tread on him. They spit on him. He, God, he did that to obey the Father. No. He peeped to God. Can God still find men and women who can peep to him, lift him high, stepping down to the mud in order to obey God, to obey his will? Get up and go and preach my word without taking into consideration their glory. May God bless you abundantly. Do you like this video? Like, comment, and share. Did you like this video? Follow Pastor Mohamed Sanogo on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok.